Hi Year 6 and welcome to episode 6 of your PE at Home videos. Now I know you're super excited to see us, we can't wait to see you and hopefully that won't be long. But for now, you're about to do episode 6. Now it's the beginning of term 4 and during term 4 you should be looking at gymnastics and health related fitness. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be focusing on things that could help you with both those. So you're going to be doing yoga where you're going to be learning five new moves and you're going to be doing strength training with Mr. Moore and Mr. Shaws. So we've got a mat just so that we didn't slide on the laminate flooring in the hall. But if you at home have laminate flooring, please find something you're not going to slide on. It could be a towel. It could be a mat if you've got one. And if you've got carpet, then you're in luck. So don't worry. Good luck. Now, we're going to run through a warm-up, we're going to run through a main and motor skill activity, and then we're going to focus on a cool-down. Now, a warm-up, as you're fully aware, is fundamental in supporting us with our flexibility and preparing us for our main activity. So now, we're going to move on to our warm-up, which is going to be moving in a circular motion. So the muscles that we're trying to engage and support, we're going to be moving in a circular motion. We're going to go from top to toe. However, with our neck muscle, it's very delicate, so we want to make sure we're just moving it nice and slow. So, neck muscle, move it to one side, and just holding it. And move it to the other side. Brilliant stuff. And looking up. And down. Everything we do today is going to be nice and controlled. So again, to one side, just lean in your ear on your shoulder, to the other side, looking up and looking down. This time we're going to do shoulder rolls, so shoulder shrugs. Just move it again around in a nice circular motion. Brilliant stuff. Trying to relax those muscles and get them ready for our motor skills activity. Now moving on to our hip. Well done, changing our direction. Fantastic stuff. This time, same with your knees. Nice little circle with your knees. Looks like a little bit of a dance move, this one and changing the direction, nice and controlled, brilliant stuff, we're nearly there. This time with your foot, put your heel on the ground, have your toes pointed to the sky, and back down to the ground. Now once you've done that once, we're just going to move in different points, slowly moving, up. Now we're moving into a circular motion, not too fast, nice and gradual, nice and slow. And change your legs, well done. Nice and steady, we're nearly there. Brilliant stuff. Now we've loosened up our muscles, we're now just going to go into a pulse rate. Let's get our heart beats a little bit faster and gets us ready for our motor skills activities. Now, I found Mr. Schultz, and he's going to go through some exercises with you, such as jumping jacks and some straight jumps, which is related to the yoga and uh, gymnastics that we're going to be looking at this term. Good luck. Mr. Schultz is going to do 40 jumping jacks. I wonder if you can do them alongside him. Good luck. Thank you. Halfway there. Thirty. Well done. That's faulty complete. Well done, Mr. Schultz. Mr. Schultz is now going to do ten straight jumps. I wonder if you can do them alongside him. If not, have a watch before you have your go. Well done. Notice how Mr. Schultz is going from his toes down to his heel, bending his knees to soften the impact. 
when he jumps. Nice pointed fingers. Well done, Mr. Shops. Welcome to our multi skills activity. Now we're going to be running through some key exercises that will support our gymnastics and our theme of this term. And the first exercise we're going to be looking at is a plank. Now we're going to look to hold this plank for one minute. I'm going to show you a demonstration and then you're going to have the chance to practice with Mr. Shops. Now, when we're looking at a plank, it's working on a full body workout, but fundamentally looking at your core. So your belly, your arms, the top of your legs, which belly, I wonder if any of you can remember what, what muscles are in our belly. That's right, our abdominals. So I'm going to quickly show you how you do a plank, and I wonder if you can have a practice after. So I'm going to have my elbows on the ground. You can link hands if you want. You can have your toe, knees off the ground and you're going to keep your back and legs as straight as possible. So now you're really working on your core. You should be able to feel it in your belly area. The longer you do it, you might be able to feel it in your, in your arm muscles as well. I wonder if anyone knows what muscles are in our arms. That's right, our tricep and our bicep. So I have my phone with me to time my one minute. If you can't hold the position for the full minute, then let your belly rest and then try and get back up into the starting position. Make sure your breathing is nice and regular and do not hold your breath through it. Right, my minute starts. important to keep your breathing going and keep your body as still as possible. Really halfway through. Twenty seconds left. Last 10 seconds. See how I'm trying to keep my body as flat as possible. And that's my minute. Good well luck. done, Mr. Schultz. Exercise number two is called a push up. Now, for a push up, we're going to be working on a variety of muscles. Fundamentally, those muscles are going to be on our arms and our chest area. I wonder if you can remember any muscles that we'll be working on. What muscles are on our arms? That's right, we have our tricep, which is on the back of your arm. We have our, that's right, bicep, which is on the front of your arm. And we also have our chest, which is called our pectorals. And another muscle that we're working on throughout is our deltoid. Now, deltoid is just at the top of our arm, all right, so we've got four, at least four different muscles that we'll be working on in this exercise. Sounds like fun. And these are perfect for holding positions, for stability, all right, in your yoga activities. Now I'm going to show you two variations. One is slightly easier, and for those that might not be as comfortable in supporting their own body weight. So you're going to have your knees together, or you can have your knees crossed. Now your lower body is supporting this press up from this one. Arms shoulder width apart. Okay, and nice and steady, you're going down as low as you can safely go. And up, I'm going to cross my legs because I find that easier. And again, down, and up. Well done. Now, if you are a little bit more comfortable, this time, similar to your plank, exactly the same body position, however, you're going to be balanced on your hands. So, your side position is on your hands. Try to make sure I'm not going to slip. Okay, back nice and straight and you're going down again. The wider you have your grip, the more it'll work on your pectorals. And up, and down. Try and go all the way up, so it's working all of those muscles. And down, 
Uh, up. Remember, it's not about how fast you do these activities or these exercises, it's how controlled they are. All right, the slower the more steady you do it, the more it'll work those key muscles. Let's see how much the shots gets on. Well done, Mr. Schultz. Halfway through. This is where I've got to show my grip. I can feel it in my arms. Oh. If you have to rest. <laughs> 10 seconds. See if I can get two more. Whoa, one. Two, one more for grip. Whoa, three. Well done, Mr. Schultz. Minute. Our third exercise is called dorsal raises. Now, this exercise is going to be focusing on your, your abdominals, which is on the front of your belly, your gluteus maximus, which is on your bottom, and your lower back. Now, it's a nice, controlled, steady exercise because we're looking at focus on our stability, our core, our balance all comes into play. Now for this exercise you're going to be, need to be laying on your belly and the idea is to lift your head up. All right so if hands behind your head or hands touching your head and nice and steady just lifting your head up as far as you can safely go. Nice and controlled. Fantastic. Good luck. A minute starts now. Try and get a nice rhythm. Yes, the importance of this is to be nice and controlled. Only raise your head as safely and as high as you can safely can. Halfway through. Mr. Schultz should be able to start feeling that in his lower back. Yeah, lower and his back. Ab abdominals at the front. Give my eight pack a workout. 10 seconds. And surprisingly, you can feel it in your arms as well. And one minute. Feel it in your arms, mate. Oh, my shoulders, eh? <laughs> Our second to last activity we're going to be looking at is uh, squats. So our squats are going to be focused on working certain muscles in specific areas, which are our quadriceps, which run along the front. And I wonder if you can remember the muscle along the back. That's right, it's our hamstring. Brilliant stuff. So for this, we're going to have our legs just, just further than the shoulder width apart. The idea is to go as low as you can, keep it nice and controlled. For stability purposes, to hold your balance, you might have your hands out in front of you and you're going to go nice and low. Again, it doesn't matter how fast you do this, it's about how slow and controlled. And you're going to do this exercise for one minute. Good luck. Right, my minute starts. I'm looking to get Three squats in 10 seconds. Well done, Mr. Schultz is nice and controlled. Ideas have your legs quite wide apart, so just further than the shoulder width apart. Try so you can back engage all of your lower body muscles. Halfway through. I wonder if anyone can remember the muscle in your bottom leg, also known as your calf muscle. 
That's right, it's your gas up Nemius. 15 seconds. Nearly there, Mr. Schultz. If I can get one more. And time up. Well done. Our last exercise is going to be called sit-ups. Now, I wonder if you can remember the muscle on the front of our belly, just below beneath our pectorals. That's right, it's our abdominals, also known as our abs. Now, I'm going to give you two variations of sit-ups, because again, there's some children might be more comfortable doing the harder sit-ups, and others, not so much. It's not a problem, okay? We're all at different levels. Now, you're going to sit on your uh, Knee slightly bent, try and get a nice solid foundation, the base of your feet on the floor. And you're going to go back for the first one. Okay, you're just going to raise your legs, just so they touch your knees. So just try and get your head up, but you're not sitting all the way up. So you're just raising your legs, just so they're just past your knees. If you're not as comfortable, you might just push your hands up so they do touch your knees. If you are a little bit more comfortable, you might be able to get up just slightly more. All right, just engage your nose abdominal a little bit more. If you are more comfortable, then you can have your hands by your head, okay, on the back of your head. Okay, remember, don't pull onto your head, just make sure they're touched to the sides, all right, or in that area, and you're going all the way, well, not all the way down, you're not touching your back on the floor, you're going all the way up, and you're going slightly down. There we go, just so we're still working on those abs, we're keeping them fully engaged throughout. Two, now remember, it's not about speed, nice and steady. Let's see how you and Mr. Schultz get on. Mr. Schultz is going to do the advanced ones, the harder ones to start off with, then he's going to change with 30 seconds for the slightly easier, the beginners. Good luck. And it starts now. to sit, sit up to it is not to start too fast that's 30 seconds now I'm gonna change twenty seconds left last ten seconds We'll get one more, and that's one minute. Well done, Mr. Schultz. Now we're going to finish off with our cool down. Now, cool down is just as important as our motor skills and our warm up because it then relaxes your body, allows you to recover, and gets us prepared for our recovery, and then we can carry on. Other than that, if we don't do it as much or don't warm and cool down, we might then open ourselves up to injury, and that's the last thing we want. So we're going to start. More slower, we're not going to do circular motions this time, but we're going to start from top to toe and we're going to do our static stretches. So again, moving your neck to one side and holding it and changing moving to the opposite side and looking up and down. Brilliant stuff. One more time, to the left, to the right, looking up, and looking down. This time we're putting our arm across our body, our other arm underneath, okay, we're just slightly pulling it towards, but not too much force. Okay, just one arm nice and straight, one other arm put underneath our elbow. Okay, we're going to hold this for about 10 seconds. A quick shake and change. Well done. Now 
This one we're going to do circular motions with our with our hips again, but nice and slow, more controlled, and we're just moving to our four different points. And we're done, and back, and forward. One more time, to one side, to the other side, to our back, and forward. This time, we're going to grab hold of our ankle, focus on something that's not moving, and we're going to be looking at our hamstring on this one, our hamstring and our quadricep. Nice and steady, holding on to your ankle, focus on something that's not moving, we're doing brilliant. Well done, and change legs once you've done that for 10 seconds. Now, I'm not able to grab my other ankle, but I'm going to hold it in that position. So remember, hold on to your ankle, don't pull it too tight because you'll be able to cause injury, just enough so you can feel it and the knees are touching. Three, two, one, well done. Now you're going to have your toes pointed to the sky, we're working on our gastrocnemius, which is our calf muscle, well done. Pointing to the sky, maybe hold on to your opposite leg, knees nice and bent, your opposite knee that you're working, the leg that you're working on this one, so if you're nice and straight with your toes pointing to the sky, you should be able to feel it all the way down the back of your leg. Brilliant stuff, and change over. Sit really, point your toes to the sky. Fantastic stuff. Well done for completing today's activity. So today we're going to look at yoga and we're going to learn a few poses and then as we go on to the next session we're going to put them together and link them as a routine. So we're going to learn lots of different moves today that you're going to try and remember for next week. Now yoga is really good for us. Yoga allows us to develop our breathing techniques, to calm our bodies down and calm our brains down because sometimes it's just a little bit chaotic up in there. So, we're going to work through that, we're going to start off with the breathing technique and then we're going to learn lots of different moves, so good luck! So this move is called the mountain pose and the idea is that we're going to elongate our body and straighten ourselves up and that's going to really help to improve our posture. So starting with our feet, our feet are going to be hip width apart, we're going to pull our tummies in which will hopefully pull along the front of our legs. So it's going to engage our core and our leg muscles. We're going to have our arms out. We're going to keep our head nice and high. And we're going to roll our shoulders back. So we pull ourselves up. And we're going to stay here for two big breaths. You ready? In through your nose. Out through your mouth. In through your nose. Out through your mouth. Well done. This one is called the chair pose and that's exactly how it sounds. It's gonna look like we're about to sit on a chair. So, we're gonna start in the mountain pose, which means that we're gonna bring our shoulders back. And this is gonna help strengthen our legs and our core muscles and our upper body, okay? So, we've got our feet in our hip width apart. We've got our body engaged because our tummy's being sucked in, our legs are nice and strong. And as we exhale, we're gonna bend our knees and we're going to go down into a slightly bent position and as you do that your arms are going to come up palms facing each other and you're going to be sat down so i'm going to face that way so you can see it in action so from here i've got my mountain pose you can see my shoulders are back and then as i exhale into the chair pose hold it here and back up you come back down into your mountain pose. Okay, so facing forward, so you can see it this way, feet hip width apart, I breathe in, and exhale. Hold it here, remember we're using those muscles to keep strong in this position, and then back in to our mountain pose. Well done.
the tree pose. Now the tree pose can be started very easily and you don't have to have an awful lot of balance because you're going to work on it. However, it can go from an easy level all the way up to a more advanced level. And we're going to run through those together. So, tree pose is going to come from a mountain pose. So as you've noticed, the mountain pose is quite a nice, easy one to start with. And to start your tree pose, you're just going to place your weight over one leg. For me, it's going to be my left leg. And I'm going to put my foot here. Okay, so you'll notice I'm now balancing on one leg. My foot isn't too high. And I'm going to bring my hands in and I'm going to hold it here, trying to keep myself as still as possible. So not only am I working on my balance, I'm working on my concentration. I'm concentrating and trying to keep as steady as I possibly can. Then when you're ready to come out, back down into your mountain pose. So if we were to make that a little bit harder, I'm going to bring my foot up towards my knee. So I'm going to come in and I might just feel it up to my calf. So from here, I'm going to bring it in, keep my hands here. Remember, I'm concentrating. And back out into your mountain pose. Now, for those of you that are quite flexible, which is what we're working on, you might want to bring your knee even further up towards the top of your leg. Now, I'm a little bit unbalanced on this one, but I think we're going to have to practice. And then you're going to get yourself back into that hand pose. So you're now in the tree pose. Engage your core, bring your quads forward, and hold it here. Remembering those breathing techniques. Good, I can feel my legs slipping down. So it's not a problem, but as long as I say balance, are you ready? And then back down into your mountain pose. Well done. next one is the downward facing dog. Now to do this you're going to need to be on your knees, your toes are going to need to be tucked under because you're going to go on flat on your feet and your hands are going to go on the floor in front of you. Okay? As we breathe in we're going to lift our knees off the floor, straighten our back and we're going to go into what looks like an upside down V. So you ready? And in, hold it here. Now we can hold this for as long as possible. Make your head all nice and loose. And when you're ready, exhale and bring your knees down. And we're going to do that one more time, bringing it in. Nice and loose. And that's downward facing dog. Our last one that we're going to look at is called the child pose. Now this is a nice easy one and it helps us to relax. So your toes are going to be touching, your knees are going to be hip width apart and you're going to be kneeling like I am now. And when you're ready, you're going to drop yourself down onto the back of your legs and you're going to drop your head to the floor just here. Okay, drop, put your head on the floor and relax. You can have your hand here. You can have them closer, you can even have them behind you, wherever works for you. But I want you to relax as much as you can. And then when you're ready, bring your arms back in, exhale, and back up. So just to remind you, your toes are together, your bottom comes back to your heels, and you're going to loosen yourself down to the floor and relax. Trying to keep yourself nice and loose. You're stretching your body and holding it in position. Well done. Yay, you did it. Episode six done. So beginning of this term is obviously going to be unusual because we can't give you gymnastics things to do at home. But hopefully the yoga is going to improve your flexibility and your strength. And the strength training is going to work your entire body so that you are ready for those moves like 
handstands, cartwheels, all those things that involve a lot of core strength. So well done for today. I hope you are looking forward to episode seven and we will see you next week. Bye.